Hi, my name's Keith with No Boundaries International. I'm just curious, do you have memories that come back to you like they do to me? Memories of past mistakes, past failures, memories of rejection, pain, and trauma. Have you received healing from these memories? Or do they still haunt you and help define who you think you are? Before we go any farther, I realize there's a lot of pain out there. People have hurt you. And before you dive into any of these memories, you need to ask God if it's safe. The last thing I want you to do is dig back into a memory that's going to give you more trauma. Make sure you're in a good place before you dive in. Well, I want to share one of my memories. Back when I was in seventh grade, uh, I was a sports fanatic. And I got to go to all the high school football games. And on the high school team, there was one player better than all the rest. His name was Phil. Phil was the superstar. And as a seventh grader, I looked up to Phil. I wanted to be like Phil. Phil was my hero. Well, it just so happened that my parents and his parents were friends. And one summer weekend, several families went to the lake. And my family went and Phil's family went. I was so looking forward to it. I get to go to the lake with Phil. Well, I'm guessing I probably followed him around that weekend. I don't recall, but there's one memory that is very vivid. Phil was out on the lake talking with some of his high school friends. I was also on the lake about 150 feet away when I saw Phil make a fist, pounded into his hands, and he pointed right at me. I knew what it meant. I dropped my head and I walked slowly to the beach and walked away. Phil was my hero and my hero had just rejected me. He didn't want me around. Well, you can see as a seventh grader how this memory would affect me. And this memory continued to come back and remind me how insignificant I was, but I wasn't wanted, but wasn't loved. Well, I was sitting around a table with a bunch of no boundary uh, volunteers when I brought up how past memories would come back to me. They asked me to give an example, and so I shared this story. They kind of walked me through the healing process, and the last step they asked, well, where was Jesus with you at that lake? Well, I felt pressure to come up with this really great answer. But the longer it took me to come up with an answer, I felt pressure to come up with any answer. So I said, oh, he was standing right next to me. And they kind of oohed and awed, and we moved on. But the problem was, I didn't see Jesus standing next to me, so I hadn't received healing. So about two months later, I revisited this memory using a method called reframing. Step one in reframing, we kind of went over. The first thing you must do is ask God if it's safe. Do not dive in until you feel that. So I asked, and I felt like it was safe. The second step is just to draw what you see. Well, if you're like me, draw is a four-letter word. <laughs> I'm left brain. I can draw a pretty good stick figure, and that's it. But this process has nothing to do with how well you draw. You see, your pain and trauma is not stored in the intelligence part of your brain. Otherwise, I probably would have solved this problem. Pain and trauma is, is stored in your imagination and emotion. So you have to find a way to get to that part of your brain before healing can begin. So I gave in and I drew. Again, you just draw what you see. So I drew the lake, and of course I had to draw some fishies, and I drew the sun and the clouds and some birds, and then I drew Phil out in the lake with some of his friends, and I drew me in the lake. And then as best as I could, I drew Phil pounding his fist and pointing at me. The third step is to dive in even deeper. Again, we're trying to get to the imagination and emotion. So you start asking yourself, what more do I see? What do I hear? What do I smell? What do I taste? What do I feel? Well, picture yourself at the lake. What do you, what do you see and hear and feel? I can feel the, the water pounding against me. I can feel the cool breeze coming off the lake and cooling my skin, but at the same time, the sun warming me up. I can hear the, the kids playing. I can hear parents talking. I can hear, feel, I can smell the smoke from a campfire. I mean, just the excitement of being at the lake. Can you just feel it? So then the next step, the fourth step. And sometimes these fourth and fifth steps can take time. So be patient if it doesn't come to you right off the bat. But the fourth step is to ask God, what do you want me to know? Well, in this picture, it's, it's, pretty, it's more obvious than some. See, look how big I drew Phil and look how small I drew myself. 
that's really how I saw myself. I saw him as this big icon. I saw me as this puny little kid. And when the, you know, the rejection, the pain of that, not being loved, not being wanted. But then comes the last step. Because right now, what's the story of this picture? When this picture comes to my mind, what do I focus on? I'm focused on Phil pounding and, and rejecting me. So the last step is to put Jesus in the picture. But this time I wanted to do it personal, something that meant something to me. And what came to mind, it took a while, but what came to mind was even being a, even a smaller kid. When you come out of the water, whether it's at the lake or a swimming pool, and that Oklahoma breeze hits you and you immediately feel the chills and the goosebumps. And what better than to wrap a warm towel around you? And even better than that, what if your mom and dad wrapped that towel around you and held you close, comforted you, let you know that you were loved? So that's exactly what I did. I drew Jesus on the beach with a huge towel, ready to wrap his arms around me and hold me tight and let me know that I'm loved. And on this towel is written the word, chosen. Now, when this memory comes to mind, I don't focus on Phil pounding his fist. My mind immediately goes to Jesus. The fact that I'm loved, that I'm accepted, that I'm chosen. Do you see how now that I've reframed this, I've rewritten the story, and now I've truly received healing. So my question to you, when memories come back from the past for you, memories of mistakes, failures, rejection, are you going to continue to focus on the pain? Or are you going to rewrite your story? My hope, my hope and desire is that you will have the courage and the wisdom to dive in. Because healing is really good. Thanks for letting me share.